Hello and welcome back to the Pasta Podcast, where we talk about nothing but pasta. Today we will not be talking about pasta. Today we'll be talking about Spongebob. Um, we, of course, are your pasta chefs. I'm Gigi. This is... Olivia. How are you doing, Olivia? I'm good, you fellow pasta chef. Um, we That was a... <laughs> That was a joint um, decision to call us pasta chefs. Yeah, we're we're your pasta chefs. Um, you are our pasta fam. So, I titled today's episode "Macaroni" for the specific reason that I used to eat the Kraft mac and cheese um, yes. macaroni that had the SpongeBob's, and it was my favorite thing. So, yeah. and today we're talking about SpongeBob. So, what could be better? Um, I actually have so, golden brush behind me. Yeah, nice. I did it myself. I did watch a couple episodes in preparation. Um, and I meant to watch the first episode, and then I watched eight more. Um, so. The first episode is when he gets hired, right? Yeah, it's called Help Wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, also, he's the reason that he gets hired, because they're like, we're not going to hire this guy. And then like a a bunch of anchovies come in and they're like we want food and they don't have a fry cook so i don't know why they didn't want to hire spongebob um (laughs) and then spongebob comes in and he's like i'm ready um and then he makes them all really fast and then um mr crab sees the money and he's like whoa you're hired um and then squidward is like but mr crab (laughs) isn't that the one where they sing the tiny tim song yeah. Yeah. I, I love Tiny Tim. Um, on a, on another note, something they describe in the first episode. I have notes. Um, do you want to know why SpongeBob lives in a pineapple? Yeah. This is the explanation that the narrator gives. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple. You silly. That's the that's the explanation. That's the whole thing, um, and of course it says that in like a French accent. He goes like, "Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple." Are you shitty. Oh, I don't yeah, know how to do cool. French accent. Anyways, yes, of course he lives in a pineapple. Is that any better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do the French talk like that? I don't know. I just like. I I remember like watching that religiously, like watching SpongeBob religiously. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's where I stopped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think your favorite episode is? Um, actually, I discussed this with my with my brother because I turned on SpongeBob and he heard it and he came downstairs and he watched it with me and I asked him what his favorite episode was, um, and I said that mine is the episode with the conch shell. Because that episode is great. And my brother settled on a... He he said a couple different ones, but he settled on the one where they go to the future. Yeah, I have to... I actually... The con shell is really good. But um, for a very long time, the future one was also my favorite episode. I don't know what it was. It was just... It was so silly. <laughs> oh, um, also the one... I'm pretty sure it's called Shanghai. Um, where Patrick and SpongeBob like die and become ghosts and work on Davy Jones' boat. It, it's just yeah. really stupid and funny. It's really funny. I don't know why. I do remember it's that actually. And um, also, like, sorry, I'm just I'm just naming them off. Um, oh, God, there was like one. Oh, um, the Atlantis episode. That yeah, the Atlantis cool. episode is good. Yeah. Um, another, another one that wasn't my favorite, but I remember watching a bunch of times because it was, this was like kid horror. Um, the episode with the hash slinging slasher. You remember that? Yeah, when it turned out that he was just, um. He just wanted food. He was just some dude, Yeah. <laughs> and then they He's were like, like I only came so that I could get fed. No, and then he was like, they they were like, wait, but who's been turning the lights on and off? And they, and they're like, no, it's for a ratu. That's where <laughs> I learned who he was from. That's who I learned yeah. about Nosferatu. 
Also, he was terrifying looking. Like, that was the thing that scared me. It wasn't the hashling slasher. It was Nosferatu. <laughs> See, it was the opposite for me. I saw Nosferatu, and I was like... That guy. Like, that's silly. <laughs> like, he's silly. <laughs> yeah. What a silly little guy. Turn the lights on and off. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember the one... The f- Fist- Pain or something? The roller coaster? No. Or like there's a really there's like a crazy roller coaster called like the Fist O Pain. <laughs> it's just like no. a ridiculous roller coaster. The only thing I remember is um them having the little glove hats. Yeah. Yeah, that was Goofy I'm Goobers. Sure that was part of that episode. Yeah. Um, oh. I mean, the Spongebob movie is so good. The first one, not the second. It really is. I used to... David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Um, where he puts him between his chest and he goes, boom! Um, so, anyways. <laughs> um, an unspoken, hilarious bit of that uh, movie is when they are driving on the road and there's a part of it that's just not there. And it like turns out it's just like a gigantic slope into a valley and and then it comes back up. Um, and Patrick sits down and he goes, What happened to the road? Road, road. And it sounds like it's echoing, but then you it comes like as it's going out, it comes back to Patrick and he's just repeating road. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Because <laughs> SpongeBob's like, wait, that's not an echo. Why are you still talking? <laughs> that there are some hidden geniuses in the in like the the writers. Yeah, like, it's just so ridiculous. And then like, okay, what about the episode that scared you the most? Oh, honestly, it actually also might be the conch shell one. But I think that's I think that's time. only because yeah, it was a good episode, but it also was like kind of scary. <laughs> cause they were because they were doing all the things that the conch told them to do. <laughs> well, and they were also like stranded. That's what scared yeah. me. Yeah. I had an abandonment fear as a child. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do wonder why you have both of why. your parents. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I don't know. Um, um, something else in that episode is that um, not only was I scared of the conch because it could do a lot of these crazy things, but it, there was a moment where they did something and it gave them all food, like from the heavens. And I was like, I want the conch. I'm scared of it, but I want it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do like, whatever it asks. Um, in the plane, it said, like, Picnic and Co., and it just said food. Yeah. <laughs> With plates. Um, and, like, sandwiches that were, like, 20 miles high. You see, the episode... I have two episodes that frightened me the most, and that is... um, The one... I forget what it's called. It's, like... It, we're okay it's an episode where spongebob accidentally injects himself with gary's medicine and he slowly turns into a snail and it is like it is so frightening <laughs> like it is legit like it scared me as a child like i could not watch that episode it scared me so much and um another episode was um rock bottom i don't remember what that one is rock bottom um it was basically like i don't remember how he got there in the first place but he goes down to this like weird like dark area like this like the depths of the sea like a trench of some sort and he's like trying to get a bus back home but like the buses keep coming and going and like he keeps missing them i just watched that episode actually i just kind of forgot what it was of what it was called um but yeah that episode is really scary also somebody made a horror game based off of that episode and the only reason i know that is because um there's a ton of spongebob horror games but by the way um but i was watching markiplier play it 
and it was it was a very scary episode but i think the best part of that episode is um how patrick doesn't understand i i this might have been actually a different episode that i watched but patrick is like telling him where this like sketchy guy is um and wherever spongebob runs patrick's like he's right there because patrick thinks that he's the sketchy guy and there's a part, point where like spongebob goes into a mailbox and he's like ah i'm safe in here and then like he's like what is it patrick and patrick's like he's in the mailbox <laughs> <laughs> i love that episode <laughs> It's such a it's such a silly episode as an adult, but as a kid, you're like, this is scary. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. You're like, no, because as a kid, you're like, genuinely like, who is this? Yeah. Why but is he invisible? Is Why can Patrick just, only see him? He's literally just seeing SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, this wasn't really a scary episode, um, but early on, this was like the second or third episode. But, like, all of the episodes have, like, three episodes in them. Um, there's an episode, it's just called Plankton. And it's the first episode with Plankton in it. And to try to get the secret recipe, he goes into Spongebob's brain. And that's not the scary part for me. The scary part for me was when I was re-watching it. Um, Sp- Spongebob realizes that he's being controlled and he's, like, walking around and it's, like, 2 a.m., um, so he manipulates his eyes to go into his brain so that he can see Plankton. And sometimes it cuts back to like his outer body where it's just like his veins for his eyes. And it's terrifying. What the hell? It is terrifying. Um, that's the first episode that Plankton's in, really? Yeah. Wow. Quite an entrance for him. Also, um, in order to get because that was his second attempt at getting a Krabby Patty. Um, his first attempt, he was either inside of SpongeBob already or inside of Squidward's nose because um, he ended up inside of the Krabby Patty and making it look like it was sentient, like moving around. Um, and then Mr. Krabs was like, that's Plankton. Because um, <laughs> he's very smart when it comes up to people stealing their his money. Um, so do you remember he will that go episode? to lanes. Yeah, he will. Do you remember that Plankton episode where they switched lives? Him and Mr. Krabs? I vaguely, like, I, I remember <laughs> that happening, but I don't remember anything about it. Um, yeah, like, basically, like, I don't remember, I don't remember how he gets there. A lot of these, I, I don't remember the situation, but, um, <laughs> you just remember that Mr. Krabs is naked. <laughs> they were like, Mr. Krabs is naked or something like that. Like he, because he like has the role as plankton, right? And so he like comes in and tries to steal the formula, and he's butt naked. And then they like have like one of those hyper realistic like painted scenes of him, and it's just him and his shiny shell, and it like glistens. <laughs> oh, that's something unrelated that's something that i noticed about the first episode is that all of and my brother got mad at me for pointing this out because he's like obviously they're not going to be the same color um but this is spongebob and they're a different color later on so um both squidward but especially mr crab's eyelids are a different color than like mr crab's shell and I know what you're think- thinking, which is what my brother said. He was like, well, you know that episode where we see the inside of Mr. Krabs and it's that pink color? That's why it's pink. And I was like, no, I get it. But like, he- his eyelids are red in the later season. So why did they do this in the first season? That is weird. You ever see how like Patrick has eyelids in earlier seasons, but he doesn't in later ones? Like he's just, yeah. he's just like wide eyed all the time. But then in, like, earlier episodes, he'll just be, like, he looks super lazy all the time. Oh, and he has eyebrows in earlier seasons. Yeah, he and does. he does it later on or something like that. Wait. Well, doesn't Patrick have, like, he has, like, purple eyelids or something in the first couple seasons. And it's, like, a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's, like, also bright pink. I found it. I found it. Um... 
Okay, so basically, let me walk you through this. So, I okay. didn't mean to interrupt. Um, the first Patrick design, he is, like, hot pink. And he's got, like, see-through eyebrows. Like, they're just, like, squiggles. And then, later on, he gets to be... Like, that's in the first episode. That's what he looks like. And then... Uh, excuse me. And then, um, a little bit later on... He's a little bit peacher, and he's still got, like, the weird see-through eyebrows, like, disease. And then his current look is, like, he's got, like, fully black eyebrows, and he's lighter. His design yeah, has changed. I'm sure that there's, like, a reason why they kept lightening his skin. Maybe that's, like, something yeah, that... Washed. <laughs> he did get whitewashed. But maybe that's something that, like starfish actually do because don't they have like like actual experts working with them now so maybe they're like hey if we want to make this realistic we need to make them lighter every couple seasons <laughs> um but i do think it's weird that they're changing his eyebrows so often <laughs> stop it yeah, the evolution um, of patrick's eyebrows yeah so the other thing is off topic you know how spongebob's clothing is um you know because he's got like a big face and like a really small body um yeah and that's why he wears those pants that's t uh pants and a shirt um mm -hmm. so one of the really early episodes that i'm sure everybody remembers is the episode where he rips his pants um and to make matters worse not only does he rip his pants in that episode but multiple times on purpose, he rips his pants in front of other people and flashes those people. Um, but then also, he rips his underwear on purpose as well. So he's fully flashing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, he's not animated with anything. But like, it's still weird. He's like, he's like, here is my ass. You know, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not something that's normal. Um, and then also at the end of that episode, he's like performing in his underwear that keeps magically repairing itself right before he has to rip him again. Um, and all of a sudden, like all of his underwear rips and like the front of him um, and he like covers it and he blushes. And in the background, you can hear somebody wolf whistle. <laughs> and that's where that episode ends. But like, how fucked up is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, you before when you were talking about um squidward it reminded me of the one episode where he gets his reed stuck in his throat and sandy has to shrink down to microscopic size to repair it but it actually ends up being spongebob and patrick that go in there <laughs> <laughs> you know what i find that funny for two reasons one well three reasons one i don't remember that episode at all um <laughs> Two, that exact same thing happens in Wizards of Waverly Place, believe it or not. Um, and three, the one of the first, one of the only episodes that I just rewatched, um, SpongeBob and Patrick are fighting um, because Squidward has made them like think that both of them hate each other, mm -hmm. and um, Squidward starts choking and he straight up is like dying. And then Patrick rushes over and he inflates, <laughs> he inflates Squidward until yeah. the fork that he swallowed comes out. Um, and that's what reminds me of what you just described. <laughs> I remember that episode. And then he's like, oh, you saved my life, Patrick. You're a good friend. And then Patrick's like, I can make SpongeBob jealous with this. Um, and then they're friends. And then um, Squidward later is like, oh, my back hurts. I tweaked my back. You know, he's like moving slowly because he hurt his back. And then SpongeBob's like, oh, fix it. And even though he does fix it, um, fixing your back, saving your life. I know which friend I would go with. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I feel like Patrick still has the upper hand there. Well, and also it's like with the whole like remember like they get the fizzy water and they like burp a lot and that's what makes them become friends again yeah that's crazy like 
Mm-hmm. That's. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine if we started hating each other? Um, because um, sentient bubbles were. Uh, sounded a little bit like each other and we were like, ah, oh, you said something bad about me. Um, and then we were like, water. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hand oh, you water okay. one day. That's what I'm going to do if we ever get in a really big fight. I'm going to be like, I hand you a water bottle and you'll be like, my real friend. <laughs> so true. Um, also, another creepy episode is the one where they um they think they've killed the health inspector so they go and bury him but he's he's alive yeah that that is creepy and then when the police come by and they're like hey can you make us a gravy patty and they're like yeah sure and then they're like we have to go into the fridge and get the guy do you oh. do you remember the episode with the pretty patties of course I do. Did you ever want to eat them? I did, but I also, like, the look of them didn't seem that appetizing to me. Like, I thought they would taste like, um, like food coloring or paint. See, it was the opposite with me. I never really wanted to eat a Krabby Patty, but in, but then in the Pretty a- Patties episode, I really wanted to eat a Krabby Patty. <laughs> it's like, that looks so bomb. I think it's because I thought that they looked like, like, macarons. Macarons. <laughs> Well, I always, like, I always liked, like, they always looked appetizing to me. Um, and I think it's because, uh, I don't know, just, like, their look. They looked appetizing, like, Krabby Patties in general. But, um, one time when I was little, my mom gave me, like, a crab cake. Like, she made a crab cake. And she gave it to me, and she was like, look, it's a Krabby Patty. And so I ate it, and I was like, this is not how it's supposed to taste. Yeah, because you know that up. they're, you know that they're basically hamburgers. It's just that you know, they're sea creatures, so it's not actually ham. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> don't you talk about mystery like that, okay? Mystery. Put some mystery. respect on mystery's name. <laughs> I that SpongeBob had like the, the vision of him in mystery, and he had the really long hair. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know oh, what? I okay. Like Bunchbob is like one of the only characters who I'm like, you know, like those things like you see people on Twitter and you're they're like post your top four like, he's so me. Um. Yeah. Bunchbob. He's so SpongeBob. me. Bunchbob. He he's is so, so me. There. Um. I don't remember what the episode was, but there was a moment where um. There was a moment that Spongebob and Patrick in one of the episodes I was watching the other day um, were talking to each other. And I was like, this is literally me and Olivia's relationship. Like, (laughs) this is uncanny Um, because Patrick was like, no, I do remember what it was. It was the first episode. Um, Patrick is the reason that Spongebob gets a job indirectly because patch spongebob's like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it he gets up to the door and he's like i can't do it and then patrick stops him and he's like you can do it you're okay and he's like no i'm not gonna get hired and then patrick's like you're fine you're gonna get hired so patrick got spongebob his first job you got me my first job and me and spongebob both have anxiety so I think we need to get those matching tattoos is what I'm saying. (laughs) We'll see. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know who I relate more to, though. I feel like I I relate to Spongebob because I feel like a little bit autistic. And I feel like... (laughs) I guess the the staple of neurotypical characters, Patrick Starr. (laughs) (laughs) He is. He is so neurotypical. It's crazy. Like, he is, like, totally average. Like, he's just stupid, that's all. He's just genuinely dumb. Like, he's not, like, a, the type of guy who, like, he can't add, like, math. Like, he's genuinely stupid. Drake the type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just saved a bunch of those pictures. You get to send them all to me. Oh. Yes, I will. 
But I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I relate more to Spongebob sometimes. I guess I just got yeah. that main character energy. <laughs> See, <laughs> I, as a kid, you always relate to either Spongebob or Patrick. But as an adult, you suddenly relate a lot more to Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for and yourself. The, I do not no, relate to Okay, Squidward. so this is the... This Squidward is everything I want to be, actually. Because um, the episode... I don't know if you remember the episode where um, the Krusty Krab gets a call and it gets requested to deliver pizza. And Squidward's like, we don't make pizzas. And then Mr. Krab has a bunch of Krabby Patties and he goes like this and suddenly it's a pizza. Um, and then he does that again and suddenly it's in a box. Anyways. Um, so, Pat Patrick... Um, Spongebob and Squidward both go on this adventure in order to deliver this pizza. As you know, when they say, the Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza for you and me. Um, bars, by the way. Um, so they get to the door, finally. And, Squ and Spongebob hand delivers it. And he's like, here's your pizza. And then the guy's like, where's my soda? And then he's like, "You didn't order a soda." And he's like, "I can't, I can't eat this pizza without my soda." Um, and then SpongeBob starts crying and like leaves the door. And then Squidward goes up to the door, like he doesn't accept the pizza. He's like, "I'm not paying for this." And then Squidward goes up to the door with the pizza in hand, and he goes, "You're gonna eat this pizza, and you're gonna like it." He doesn't say that. No, but he's no, he goes, "This one's on the house," and then he smashes. His That's face. what he says. He goes, you know what? This one's on the house. And then um, nice. This is the only nice thing he's ever done for SpongeBob. And nicely, he's just like, you know what? I'm going to um, I'm going to be nice to SpongeBob and I'm just going to pretend that he took the pizza and he loved it. He goes, he ate it in one bite, which he did. <laughs> no, that was that was like the nicest thing Squidward had ever done. You know, it was just like. I don't know. I Squidward does have his moments. He really does. He does. He looks out for his besties. Except that one time where you literally hate SpongeBob and Patrick because they like it's like pretend to be Squidward Day or they say it is and then they make him lose his like he's trying to sell his house and then like he can't anymore because he's got nutcase neighbors. Yeah. And they, because remember, they all pretend to be him. And then the lady's like, How many more Squidwards are there? And then Gary comes in the room with the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. What a phenomenal show. Yeah. You know, the one of the things that um, really confused me um, the second episode, well, I say second episode, it's in the first episode because they're. There's like three episodes in one episode. Um, Sorry, my cat's arm is under the door and it's really funny. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but the second episode is um, basically like five minutes. I don't know. Um, and um, you know what happens in it? There's no dialogue. But there's no dialogue and all it is is Spongebob leaf blowing for one leaf and getting sand all over Squidward. And that's the second episode. And it's a weird episode. It's a good one though. It's like five it's like five minutes long. <laughs> and there's like no dialogue. <laughs> and also Squidward was like eating food and then all of a sudden the only thing on his plate was like a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> You know the episode where it's just like um a spon SpongeBob or no, it's a Squidward episode. And it's basically like him and he's like lives in a Squidward village and it's the same thing every single day. Yeah. I feel that way so much. <laughs> like he's so me. <laughs> like I feel um, like I am that episode. I felt that way in COVID. Yeah. I, you know how I felt in COVID? Um, someone who really represented me in COVID, Spongebob-wise, is um, Squidward in that episode where he discovers how delicious Krabby Patties are. 
<laughs> I was just eating so much food. And not that I don't do that now. I do. It's just a little it's just a little bit better because I'm not eating food that I also don't like. Because <laughs> in COVID you couldn't go out to buy food that you liked. <laughs> yeah. So Well Yeah. Me. Um I do think that the episode that I relate to the most is probably um <laughs> um <laughs> just like when 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 SpongeBob goes over to his grandma's house and like he's like um <laughs> he like eats his grandma's cookies and whatever and people make fun of him because his grandma still kisses him or whatever and I feel like and then like at the end of the episode when he's like no, I don't want to be manly. Because remember, he gets, like, mutton chops. And um, at the end of the episode, when he's like, I don't want to be manly anymore. And he's like, that episode of um, just, like, him being like, no, I don't want to grow up. I want to be, I want to be a little boy who likes to eat his cookies. Um, I just, I wanted that. I, I was like, that's so me, because I'm like, I'm never gonna grow up. I'm not. I'm yeah. gonna keep these mutton chops. Who do you think is the character that you see yourself most as? Um, like out of all I, the characters, not just SpongeBob or Patrick. See, I think for like experience, Sandy obviously because she's the most human. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, besides that, but. Yeah, but besides that, um, um, I mean, I guess SpongeBob because I, I really, I feel like I am a lot more childish than, uh, than I should be. <laughs> um, I was actually gonna say SpongeBob too, but seeing as though I was taken, I think no, you can take it. <laughs> No, it's fine. Um, if I would say SpongeBob, um, but I also think uh, I actually, I actually don't know. Um, I think that I was thinking maybe Mr. Krabs because he's greedy and I also like money, but I also wouldn't go to the ends of the earth to get money. So, actually, probably. Um, Larry the Lobster, you know, I, um, I, I really think that Larry the Lobster is a good character. I think he has a lot of growth. Um, and he also doesn't pressure people into stuff, but he does motivate people. And I feel like he's me. Yeah. Uh, I also You're living like Larry. I'm you living really like are. Larry. That is that is my favorite. That is my favorite impression to do actually. Living <laughs> like Larry. <laughs> um, Other than my Dr. Phil impression, of course. Of course. Shut the hell up, bitch. <laughs> no, everybody comment on what you think is the character you most relate to in SpongeBob. Yeah. And you can also tweet us. You can also send us some mail. I think we should leave it on that note. What do you think, Gigi? Yeah, I think so. Do you wanna you wanna take us out? I will. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight, Pasta Fam. We love you. We miss you. We hope you eat some good pasta. And we hope to see you next week. Thank you. Stay hungry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>